Next, we're going to hear from Vijay Prashad, who is a chair professor in South Asian International Studies at Trinity College in Hartford, Connecticut. He's the author, of course, of numerous books that many of us are familiar with, most recently, The Darker Nations, A People's History of the Third World. He writes regularly for Counterpunch and Pragati, which are both places in which uh, pieces that he's written in relation to the Occupy movement can be found. But I would also stress kind of uh, uh, tailing off of Bernadine's reference in terms of thinking about this globally, Vijay's efforts as an editor and as a contributor to a range of publications internationally, including Frontline in Chennai, India, and Bol from Lahore, Pakistan. And he will speak on Occupy as an opening. Vijay. Good afternoon. Everybody looks happy. There's no snow in Chicago. Down with snow. My presentation is called Down With. Down with this, down with that. Down with everything. Down with the present, up with the future. Down with. Of course it comes in three parts. Because <laughs> we're all closet Christians. <laughs> My three parts are called the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. <laughs> First the Father. <laughs> the first part is called Finally. So, you know, it just happened that I was in New York on uh, September 17th at the Breck Forum, which, uh, like the Hull House, is a remarkable institution. Uh, named after the very great human being, Bertolt Brecht. And I was doing a day-long series on uh, the decline of America, actually, which I don't, I, I like Bernadine, don't agree that the decline of America is catastrophic, because there is this imbalance between political and economic power. And somebody mentioned there's something happening at Wall Street. So, of course, you know, we went to have a look, and I thought, this is going to be nothing, you know. This is not going to be anything. A Canadian magazine has <laughs> called for a tactic before a strategy. And nothing's going to come of it. Uh, of course, having been involved in things for, you know, 25 years, I know that Rosa Luxemburg was always right, that uh, spontaneity is the essence of struggle. And of course, there were a few hundred people there. And it really did look like it would be you know, one night's game. How many of us like to sleep on concrete? <laughs> because when, when they call things parks in New York, there is no grass. <laughs> These parks are essentially tile and concrete. <laughs> but remarkably, of course, you know now, the story takes a different turn, and people learn to uh, build communities in uh, privatized spaces. But finally, because <laughs> then I, you know, talk to friends uh, in different parts of the world and they all said, finally, finally in America, finally. And finally because I think the wave opens in 1989, 10 years before Seattle, at uh, the Caracaso in Caracas, mm -hmm. where you get the major breakthrough against neoliberal domination. It's the first major uh, rebellion against neoliberalism. That doesn't mean it's the first rebellion, because there have been many before, of course, IMF riots, bread riots, governments being overthrown, etc. But the Caracaso, it seemed to me, was a self-conscious event right after it had happened. You may remember that Chavez, that day, was the, president, uh, was the head of the presidential guard at Miraflores Palace but happened to have, I think, diarrhea, and wasn't at his post. When he returned from his convalescence and came back to the palace, the other soldiers said to him, Senor, we don't want to shoot at our people anymore. And Chavez writes and has spoken about this, said that it was at that moment that he realized that Venezuela was ready for a revolution. And they attempted an armed revolution. Three years later, they failed. And he comes on television. I mean, what moron decided to put Hugo Chavez on television? <laughs> he comes on television and he says, everybody, I take personal responsibility. Now, you have to imagine that in Venezuela, as, of course, in the great United States, no politician has ever said, I take responsibility. <laughs> you will never get anybody 
saying, I am personally responsible for this mess. <laughs> it's always some other moron who's responsible. Okay? Chavez said, I take, but he said, everybody go home por ahora. <sighs> the great words. Go home for now. Yeah. Because we will return. And did they return? Of course, they returned electorally this time. So the Caracaso, it seems to me, is the opening of a major self-conscious salvo against neoliberalism. And then we say, finally, in the United States, mm -hmm. after having eaten the dirt of neoliberal politics for as long as the South has, but denied it by saying, after all, we are El Norte. We are the great country with the great American dream. And now the denial has brought us to our knees. And finally, we have to admit that, you know, as Langston Hughes said, when there's a depression, the country declines. But in my neighborhood, Langston Hughes said, people have just one or two pegs to fall. There has been a Caracas level decline of standards in this country for 25 years. But it hadn't hit certain sections of our society. It hadn't hit people who as yet felt enfranchised. And now they are piss mad. <laughs> so first, the ones who were piss mad were the people who thought they were going to get jobs at office parks. And when that shit went down, they formed the Tea Party. <laughs> okay? And then it gets worse for, and then we get the real phenomena, which is Occupy. Occupy, in a sense to me, finally has decided that this system is finished. Mm -hmm. Hence, no demands. This system is done. Down with, down with this, down with that, down with everything. <laughs> it is over. Finally, the enfranchised have said, we are party to what a lot of people in America have already come to terms with that we have been rendered disposable. The entire south side of Chicago is disposable. Detroit is disposable. Vast sections of Oakland, disposable. The northern end of New York City, disposable. Now others are saying, what the hell? I'm disposable too. Occupy. Down with this, down with that, down with everything. Part one. <laughs> Part two. Part two, what is sanity is insanity. What is insanity is sanity. Yesterday I was at an event for the 30th year of the incarceration of Mumia Abu Jamal on death row in Philadelphia. And I can tell you, Mumia came on the phone and Mumia is the most dignified man in America. Mumia is in his body inside the jail but his mind is totally free. 99% of Americans' bodies are free, minds are in jail. <laughs> Mumia is not in jail. He is the clearest thinker about what's been happening in America. And he has been writing and speaking from a jail cell the size of a closet. He didn't need to stand among us to see the truth about the catastrophic decline of this country against its own people. A war not only against the planet, but against its own population. What is insanity is sanity. Look at the way we live. We have houses in Chicago where it's freezing, where we decide to put the heat on, correct? Sensible thing to do. Inside a heated house, we have a refrigerator. <laughs> Inside the freezer of the refrigerator, we have a heating coil. So that the refrigerator's freezer doesn't freeze over. You remember the old fridges with the ice pick? We have a cold environment. We heat houses. Then we have a cold box inside a hot house with a compressor running against the heater. And then we have a heating coil inside the freezer running against the freezer, which is running against the heat, which is running against nature. <laughs> Insanity is sanity in our society. We live like lunatics and pretend we're real people. <laughs> Occupy is about changing our imagination. We are lunatics.
We have imprisoned a man for 30 years on evidence that nobody believes is real. He is imprisoned and will now continue to be in prison even though he should be out now on time served. Yes. We are the only country in the world that believes that life sentence means for life. At the International Criminal Court when they say life sentence they mean 25 years. They don't mean for life. But we take this stuff literally. Life sentence. That means till you die. Insanity is our sanity. Occupy has to help us become sane. If it doesn't extend our imagination or challenge our culture, it has failed. Its task is to break the back of this bogus cultural consensus. So if we don't do that, this is a failed experiment. Our challenge has to be to smash this culture down with this, down with that, down with everything. Number three. <laughs> Number three basically comes back to my first point I made, which is a journal from Canada, your Canada, decides, Nathan, to call for a protest, which some people have called tenting. Okay, a great challenge to the so-called, actually it reveals the lack of public space. That I think everybody has now seen. That we are so disposable that we have no place in public. And this mayor is the biggest scoundrel of them all. Because he didn't even allow one tent to be pitched. Because he is terrified about the NATO G8 summit. for the NATO G8 summit and I hope Chicago has more than a backbone because I hope we are going to show NATO that the United States population is not willing to stand for its shit. But Ram Emanuel won't even allow a tent whereas in other cities at least for a few months they allow people to pitch tents. A tactic has come before a strategy. To pitch a tent is a tactic. We've moved tactically. Now we need to take a deep breath and ask what is our strategy? And I think that's been part of the conversation that's been happening in many cities. And it has also created some friction inside the Occupy dynamic. Some people believe that the tent is the struggle, that the encampment is the struggle. And I agree. But the encampment is not the struggle. It is a part of the struggle. The struggle is to transform the imagination of America. That is the struggle. There are many fronts to occupy. The tent is only one place. It is a tactic. It became the movement for a moment. We should now return to thinking of it as a tactic. So what is our strategy? If we don't think strategically, we won't properly be able to create a pathway for ourselves, to measure ourselves, to balance ourselves, to be patient with our struggle. It is not going to be easy to change the culture here. It is certainly not going to be easy to change the politics. That means we have to be long distance runners. We cannot lose enthusiasm. We cannot be disappointed. We cannot put our hopes into fraudulent politicians. We have to bottle our hopes in our own dreams. We have to fight deeply, but also with a sense that we are needed for decades. This is a long-term struggle. We're not going to win anything today or tomorrow. We need a strategy. We need to talk strategically. I don't have time to develop a strategy you know, here for us. I don't have time to have that conversation. But we need to workshop it with each other. We need to start those conversations. We need to think about who are our allies, who are our constituencies. Are we going to be a movement led by students? What kind of students? What is their class orientation? What is the limitation of their horizon? How are we going to link this to public employees who are under serious attack by the state? They are an important front in Occupy. 
How are we going to link this to people who are trying already to reshape the world? Organic farmers. In my town, we have people who have collectives of bicyclists. They collect trash by bicycle. They develop bicycles to bring produce from local farmers. These are people who are already creating the future. A post-contemporary cultural crisis future. Are they a part of our movement? How are they to be a full part of our movement? Also, how is this movement going to link with the dispossessed? With people who have nothing? One of the greatest parts of the Occupy dynamic has been the move in places like Springfield, Massachusetts, now East New York and Brooklyn, in Portland, Oregon, where Occupy has moved into the anti-eviction, anti-foreclosure movement. If Occupy does not centrally take the foreclosure fight seriously, there will be no link with the dispossessed. 